episode one, and we're coming in in three, two, one. Uh, is there no opener? Can't afford it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Revolution. Um, <laughs> yes, that's right. It is a Christmas special involving myself, the Professor, and the three Wallabies. Um, look, a lot's changed, to say the <laughs> least. And um, we're going we're gonna to walk you through it all day today. Look, basically what has happened is we organised a Christmas party and that Flog Hugo brought the cameras. <laughs> um, so we're going to record our Christmas party. Gents, are you okay with us? Yeah, uh, fine. That's fine. Fly on the wall type stuff, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hey, for those of you that um, have seen our show before, um, it is three wallabies and one uh, wannabe. Um, I think we can still say that. Um, and it is our Christmas party, so hello and welcome. It's hot down here in Australia, uh, and we are doing what you do here, which is drinking beer, and you've brought some prawns along, Druza. Yeah, I love prawns. We don't really have turkey and stuffing and all that shit, so we just... <laughs> <laughs> prawns. <laughs> We took do. the stuffing out. <laughs> you did. And it's, it's, it's magnificent. Now, um, a little bit has changed is the best way to describe it. Yeah, look, there's it. been yeah. a bit going on. There's a bit going on. So we thought, what better way to, uh, well, tell the people that watch this show than during our Christmas party while we're having a couple of beers. Um, what we like to do as well at the top of the show is give thanks to our sponsors. Hmm. Uh, and the news is we don't fucking have any. <laughs> <laughs> so let's all close our eyes and wish for Christmas for a sponsor. Please, Nike. Okay. All right, hey, look, there is a lot to announce today on this show, but uh, Tommy's written little intros for each of you guys, and okay. I like to do what Tommy's done, so uh, please let me start with this. Coming back into the fold is the one and only uh, one of us that has really committed to his hot boy summer body. He looks trim, taut, and terrific. Please welcome, fresh off his morning Bronco, it's Matt the Goit Giddo. Hey, y'all. Welcome. welcome. I thought that was me. Welcome. I thought it was you. Mm. Next off the bench is a man that is chomping or champing at the bit to swap the boardroom for some board shorts. He has had more 12 o'clocks than we've had hot dinners. It is a Senny Coast sensation. Please welcome back Adam Swoop. D-O-double-G. D-O-double. D-O -double. D -O -double. Good to be back, Thanks, Cooper. Ah, Good Great to have intro. you in, mate. And which swoop have we got today, just so we know, so the people at home know? Is it Surely it's holiday swoop. Tell me it's holiday swoop. <laughs> festive, festive swoop. What's festive swoop? I've got no idea, but I'm hot. You've given me this jumper, oh, and I'm no. cooking. It's mm. because okay. you didn't bring any festive cheer. Yeah. You got a little bit of Grinch going. Lost on. it over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we lost plenty over the weekend. <laughs> Didn't we? <laughs> Lastly, but certainly not least, is a man that thinks skinfold tests are for the weak. He claims that Christmas parties keep him young, and most importantly, he's the show's lovable rogue that has a wicked tongue, a knack of sinking wallaby coaches, and oh. has a wit that won't quit. Please welcome Drew the Biv Mitchell. Yeah. <laughs> All right, certainly I'll skull for that. <laughs> uh, now, Biv, obviously, um, there has, a little bit has happened with an ex-wallaby coach that we'll hope we're hoping you put the boot into a bit later. Is that? Mate, I'm just not here to. We just want your opinion. That's yeah. All. Well, mate, we actually want yours on it. I don't you have, have one. Yeah, <laughs> mate. You've been very coy. Yeah, because that's just how I think. <laughs> I think very coyly. <laughs> we'll get into that. Oh yes, we'll say that. There's lots of uh, rugby union news to catch up on, mm. um, and I'm hoping that you've had a few beers by the time we get to it, Biv. And the people at home can hear you tell Eddie to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Introducing uh, plans moving forward. Now a lot of people are saying. What happened? You guys aren't G-bra anymore. Um, at the end of the day, we have decided to go out on our own. We do a massive thank you to the GBA UK guys. Mm -hmm. uh, they were absolutely brilliant for us. Uh, Mike Tyndall, Alex Payne, James Haskell, uh, and their MD, Nick, Nick Fletcher. Do you reckon Haskell knows that we've left yet? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Haskell, he... Uh... Well, he's, he's not going to watch this. this. He's in yeah. Ibiza or DJing yeah, um, or in the Daily Mail. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> one of the three. But it is a big thank you to them. Um, at the end of the day, we just decided uh, for, you, for a few reasons, we wanted to own this. So we wanted to be 100% owners of this. And at the moment, there is six of us that own this. So if it goes right, <laughs> it's our but fault. Six, if it goes wrong. Sixes into nothing is still nothing. Yeah, yeah currently it's making yeah. zero dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Whose bright idea was it to go out? We've got no sponsors. <laughs> I thought that'd come swarming in. You blokes told me you were connected, and I'm learning it was a lie. Um, well, I, can, I can get you into a club, but I can't get your sponsors. <laughs> um, but yes, and we, we love the GBR show and, and want to wish them all the best, and hopefully we get to work with them again yeah. in the future. So yeah. thank you to them. But that does mean we do uh, have a new show. Sorry, oh. a new name for our show. Well, we need one. Oh, Do we have one yet? We have one. So over the weekend, if you were watching, we did a uh, campaign 
at name our new show and we asked people to uh, write in and give us ideas because basically we couldn't agree. Yeah. A couple of times we had meetings uh, that ended in shouting matches. Your idea is shit. I don't agree with you. Mm. <laughs> You're a loser. I hate you. So we decided yeah. to put it out to the audience and we got over 800 entries. Wow. Yeah. So th- a big thanks to all of you that wrote in names. As I said the other day, uh, I'm going to say probably 2% were good. Um, 25% was a good effort and the rest was people just insulting us basically but it <laughs> yeah. was which is also good yeah. which um, what was it three three unflushable turds and a toilet brush, <laughs> yeah. which uh, we didn't no, go unfortunately we, we wanted to go that one but it was already taken yeah so yeah. it was <laughs> trademarked already yeah. so we couldn't do that one but we put the vote out uh, boys we ended up getting it was well over 2,000 people voted oh wow, oh, wow. Yeah, great numbers people. yeah lots of support and uh, drum roll please Oh, I don't think I want the drum roll. Well, no. Okay. The, the well, name I, think I that, know what's happening. I know what it is. Yeah. The name that got, you, I know what it? it's not. The name that it's got... It's rendezvous, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Okay. So the four names were... <laughs> mine was physically, emotionally, spiritually. I lent heavily. I thought we got a big spring. Is that a Savage audience. Garden song? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Truly, madly, deep. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> then you went for... <laughs> What was your uh, something like rendezvous or something like that? Rendezvous. Oh, own, it. own it, mate. Ah, oh, rendezvous. Mate, sell it the way you Ron, sold it. Rendezvous. Yeah, yeah, but you can rendezvous. Say rendezvous. And rendezvous. Rendezvous. You know, a lot of rendezvous. Yes. Right, rendezvous yeah. or something. Rendezvous. Some shit. Yeah, you love it. <laughs> and then yours. Which one did you go for? Uh, I was once were wallabies. Once were wallabies, and then down the end we had kick-ons and kick-offs or cocoa. Was it kickoffs and kickoffs? Kickoffs and kickons. Whatever. <laughs> I don't think it He's was good at both. Geez, yeah, we're committed, matter. heavily kicking. invested in it. We were. It's kicking. Yeah. All I knew was Coco. Yes. Like so the Coco. idea of the Coco show, which we like. Now, uh, the vote went out and the by it was 60 to 40. The number one voted name was Once Were Wallabies. Well done, Drew. That's why he was so keen but, this um, morning. But, but, but <laughs> hold the phone. So there's we, an asterisk. Being the show that we are, asterisk? we... Asterix? Yeah. Same it's, shit. No, it's not even close. No, we say that in the East. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Tommy, do you say that in the East? Yeah. Okay. Asterix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So we, you know, most people would probably do this the reverse, but we went and got um, legal advice post. Yeah. Uh, once it was named once we're wallabies and we can't use the term wallabies. Yeah. Yeah. Even it, though we are former wallabies, we're not allowed to use yeah, so it's trade anything. Even, yeah, kidding. Nothing even well, close to it. Well, it, it is strongly advised that we don't. So in ter- in rugby union circles, which this show, The Spine, for now, is rugby union, the term Wallabies is trademarked and owned by um, the rugby Australian. Show. And yeah, they, rugby they, show. They, they don't support. Well, no, it's not that they don't support, but I think the underlining thing is if, if we align with that, yeah. then, you know, we can't say our true opinions. Because at any point, if we if they want to at any point, Take the name from us, then they can. Gee, you're up on your legal. Yeah, talk. well, because I got the, the, we rang the news through. broke. To, yeah. Yeah. Oh, to me right. Earlier. I thought it was for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going through a bit of that as well. At the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we well, when I said we got legal advice, I rang Drew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, mate, what you just want me to pay the thousand dollars So the good news an is, so the good news is, it is <laughs> the name that came second, which we are going to be called from now on. Congratulations, Gits. Wow. We are. Kickoffs and kick-ons from now on. We are known as the Coco Show. The Coco we show. are the Coco Show, which is, I think, it's fantastic. I think yeah, it's it great. Sounds good. C- can we just get like a little bit of a count back? How many how many votes did Ron Day mm-hmm. view get? I mean, they got a few. I, and Ollie will attest to this. He got one vote. Shut <laughs> up! I'm, I'm not kidding. He <laughs> got one, and I'll show no, you. I reckon that was, was that Kaz my vote. <laughs> Could have been Kaza. Could have been Kaza Cooper. It might have been. Might have been the old girl. Mate, She's always got my back. When we did that little recording about the four, I was so filthy if it if that was to win. Really? Yeah, I just thought it was dog shit. <laughs> You didn't say anything, though, on the call. Well, it's yeah. my phone overheated and I got kicked off. Yeah, that's true. The good news is it wasn't just you that thought it was dog shit. It was also the rugby union community and they Hang voted on. with their... You only got three votes. No, I got me. more than three. I got six, okay? <laughs> yeah, mine wasn't wow. great. What did you say? Mine's a good t-shirt. Mm. Is that I what you said? it was a really good story, though, from Swoop. Yeah. So if you don't know the story, maybe... Mm. What's the, the story name? behind? Oh, I'd forgotten. Yeah. When he was at the game. Yeah. You know, oh, no, the physically, you know, the. Sorry, yes. And I was That's thinking. That's what I was Because, you know, the last episode we had huge numbers in South Africa. And ultimately, it was a South African man that was yelling out, what was it? Attack them physically. Smash them physically. <laughs> and then. Oh, well, then we started to play with it. Yeah. Yes. Emotionally. Attack them. Yes. Yeah. Intellectually. 
So I then thought, well, surely the Springbok fans say, oh, we love the prof. No, yeah. couldn't nah. do shit. Uh, so congratulations. That's a win for you. And we are nice. forever now well, known. Well, that's us. That's us, the Coco Show. Coco's. Coco, I like it. Love it. Get the merch rolling, guys. <laughs> we need some money. Um, so the good news for a bloke called Raging Matt. Now, Raging Matt is the person that came up with Once Were Wallabies. <laughs> right. So he technically, I believe, wins the trip, the VIP trip to Super Rugby. We do need to find out where Raging Matt lives. Um, if he's in Australia, then he will get the trip to Super Rugby. So old mate, Raging Matt. Yeah, go back. Who Still win Raging it, Matt. Wins, <laughs> yeah. but doesn't win. Still so, gets to go. But what about... It's the, complex. What about old mate who's... <laughs> yeah, kick-ons and kick-offs. Yeah. So I don't know what we'll do with him. <laughs> what about who's old mate? Who, what's You're his name? His name's so Alex Fraser. I'm fucking so sweating. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So congrats, hot. Alex Fraser. So I, look, I think we're in another legal mess here. So I don't know what we're going to do. Um, but we will uh, consult Drew and we'll let you know on what happens going. Oh, I think give them all a fucking trip. Okay. Well, we'll see how we'll go. We'll speak to... Um, we'll speak to... Uh, the Super Round Melbourne, and we'll see what we can organise. Get them both mm. down there. We'll get them both down there. So congratulations. We've got the, them coming in here. The, here we go. Just bring them in. Thanks, Al. Thank you, Swoops, mate. you're forking hard, so now, oh, shit. So now that the KK show... Do you think you could roll your sleeves up a little bit? Nah, Will that save you? No. Too it's, tight. <laughs> ooh, if you are not... If you've never done an Australian Christmas, it's hot, mm. uh, is the good news. Now, um, let's talk about going forward for Team Coco, uh, the Coco show. Um the plan is, guys, and I think we all agreed on this, is that, you know, we've got quite a, a global following. So we are going to start during uh, the Six Nations on yep. February 5th. We'll each adopt the country. Um, maybe we'll phone a big European player. I was thinking maybe you could get your mate Johnny Wilkinson on. Yes. For the first episode. He would love this. This yeah. is right up his alley, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so we'll follow the Super, sorry, the Six Nations <coughs> up until Super Rugby starts. And then once Super Rugby starts, we're going to be doing the Super Rugby, and then we're going to work. Of course, our way. we'll also have sevens. We'll also have Going sevens. Well. We'll also have uh, the Rugby Championship. Uh, Wales is club coming footy. to Australia. All the club so footy. So much rugby. Uh, the European football, the top fourteen. Lots to chat about there. Yeah. Hmm. Um, lots and lots of rugby. I don't know how long the episodes will be. <laughs> Maybe three or four hours to cover it all. Or, uh, Depends we'll, if we got any sponsors. <laughs> If you are from a blue chip sponsor and uh, you want to get involved, you've got lots of cash you don't want, uh, please send us a note. Send it to Ollie. Um, now, we do... The other exciting thing is for Super Round, we have... We've got a little announcement to make and I've got this... I've got to get this correct, right? So, Super Round Melbourne have come to us mm. and they want us to be involved. Uh, it's the third year of it. It's been, it's been going great guns for them. They want to take it to the next level. They want through the all-time Wallabies to get behind Holiday it. Holiday Swoop will help that. They want basically they've come to all of us in the hope that we can find Holiday Swoop. Does Swoop get to go to that pet store he always likes in Melbourne? <laughs> what is that one? <laughs> Swoop? I'm not sure, but I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> oh, you, apparently, the little ones you find with kittens. <laughs> now, <laughs> now let me get this right. Uh, we are partnering with Super Round Melbourne in 2024, which is very exciting. Oh, I'm pumped. Keep. Keep, well, you're going to have three days down there, I think, Yeah, mate. really. So book a table. Okay. Uh, keep an eye on our socials <laughs> for more info. We'll be in the stands, on the pitch. <laughs> Same table swoop. Yep. <laughs> do, 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 they do, a booth, do they do a booth? <laughs> 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 right. Your regular table? Yes, thanks. Um, right, you might even catch us in a brand. So the idea is we're going to be in the stands. We're going to be down on the pitch. We're going to be doing a bunch of things. Adding excitement. Ultimately, the three of us are going down there to rip in for a weekend. It's four of us. <laughs> you said three of us. <laughs> oh, I yeah. figured he wouldn't be at the ground. I figured he'd be. <laughs> Boy, this Coco show sucks. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, so the four we'll of us will, will yeah. be down there, uh, and you can catch this talk of us. And I, this might be a bit premature, but maybe we'll have a bay where people can come and sit with us. Yeah. And they can have a beer with Holiday Swoop and see it in all its glory. <laughs> um, if I'm there. With all the glitter on his face. <laughs> Um, and you might uh, even be able to catch us. There's a brand new Melbourne Lounge at Amy Park. So that's all very exciting. That's March 1st to the th March 3rd at Amy Park. All 12 teams will be there. So if you're a supporter of the Kiwi teams uh, or the Aussie teams or uh, Pacific obviously Aussie. Moana Pacifica and, and Drua. Drua, then mm -hmm. uh, make sure you book your tickets. You can come down to see us and say good day. Now, lots of big announcements, but... Um, they all kind of pale in comparison to Oy, this big oh, this going? Oh, I'm looking forward to this. This is going big to be Christmas huge. announcement. Mm. Shall I give you the stage? I don't know what stage you're talking about. The, well, this 
the uh, do you want to do you want to announce do you want to announce your big announcement down the bow? Uh, um, do we have the stuff here? You've got it. Here we go. Okay. Well, I actually don't feel like I, I want to. Do, I feel do you want like me to do, do it? it? Yeah, yeah. Drew's well, more look, of a stand. I, I, I just. Was. I, I feel like I, I was. <laughs> well, you used to be a commentator, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so you know, like I said, over in uh, the Rugby World Cup in France, um, Gits had me out training a lot, and I thought, you know, and I know he likes to stay fit and all that, but I just thought there needed to be there needed to be a bit more of an agenda than just staying fit on a holiday mm. World Cup time, and. I'm excited to say and very proud to say that our boy Goit, he's going around again. Yeah. 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 So Matt Giddo has signed with the MLR and with San Diego. Yeah, the Legion. The Legion. So, so he's, we're Legion, now so. big Legion fans, of we course. Are. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I used to be a supporter of New York. They've gone under. You guys used to play for LA. They've gone under. Hopefully San Diego, San Diego will stay <laughs> strong. <laughs> They'll stay strong. <laughs> but uh, mate, that's uh, you know big news. And you know we spoke about it a little bit um, before you made the decision. And uh, well, one, what what was driving that decision? Yeah, I think um, well, you realise once you retired, you're a long time retired. Um, and I actually was just training to keep fit mm. when we we're in um, when we we're overseas. But um, before I went over there, there was slight talk with San Diego, which drew big media Mitchell when he was at the time. He was employed with them and he would, remember he said something about, oh, Gitz has been approached by a club in the MLR. That's right. And I, I just played off. I said, Drew, that, what are you so talking about? He's drunk again, is what I thought. Well, that's how I played it off. Mm. Um, but he was right. He, um, you know, I got approached by him. Then things cooled off when I was over in France and we just enjoyed the World Cup when I came back. Um, talks picked up. Um you know, pretty rapidly, and then the decision needed to be made, so I spoke to Drew, and there was one quote, what did you say, you said something in the text message which made me feel, if you're scared or something, you should do it, or if you're yeah. afraid, something about it, the, the excitement of a challenge and having a go, don't not do it because of fear, don't be driven by fear is your decision, so it was almost like that fear of failure, you know, getting competitive again, I don't know, just sparked something in me and I decided to do it, so... I'm excited. It's been tough. You know, the preseason at the moment's been hard on my own, hard yeah. slog. But it's um, yeah, it's good to have a goal again and, and to be chasing that. Yeah, it was one of those things. We we're having a you know a bit of a discussion over text, and he was sort of saying, you know, there's maybe a little bit of doubt because he's been out. You know, you didn't play at all in the the last season for for LA, and there's been some time since your last game. But I said, mate, if you're scared about it, walk towards it. Like just go at it you know like and 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 you know obviously the the chat around long time retired and all that sort of thing. And um, you know, he's clearly fit enough and and his ip anywhere would be uh you know highly valued and and um yeah i just said mate just just go for it and uh yeah i mean as far as my role i don't know obviously they've got some good young tens that they've signed uh martin nonu's i think oh, wow. uh going around again i'm not sure uh if that's 100 percent confirmed but he was there last year um so they've got guys in in those positions that i play that are you know really good players so i'm not sure if my role is more off the bench, supporting them, helping them grow through, but just that whole challenge of getting excited around a season again, um, you know, it's something that I'm pretty, pretty excited about. Is this your last year? Like, I mean, because yeah. I feel like there was a, a sense of being unfulfilled in your 22 season with Giltani. You didn't get back onto the field. I think that you maybe called that at the start of the year, declared that could have been your last season, but you didn't get back on. Obviously, the fire is still burning. Well, you remember. Are you looking? Are you approaching that? the season around? Okay, this is definitely my last season. I'm just going to take it. Yeah. 100%. Exactly the way you, um, you know, you looked at your last season. I think that one would have been my last if you didn't ruin my calf yeah. and Sorry you got me that. on the pitch. Yep. Is that why you're doing it? Because he ruined your fairy <laughs> no. tale ending? Well, I just want to see if someone else can ruin my calf the way Swoop did. <laughs> so, no, I, th I think um, I didn't get the opportunity to play. But even when we got kicked out that year in LA, there was talk around, you know, the team still being around the following year. Uh, and I was talking to the general manager at the time around coming back and playing, but working it around uh, my kids and my family because they're my priority. I don't want to disrupt them too much. Um, so there was a deal to be done there, but then ultimately LA never actually happened. So it was almost like that little door was always ajar. Um, and now I've got another opportunity to play um, for San Diego. You know, I'm really excited about that, but definitely in my last year. I think yeah. even mentally the way training's been for me, it's been tough. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the challenge. But I think to back that up and try to do that again next year, I just couldn't do it. 
you know, this year it's definitely just looking at as one year and that's it. Have you got some merch here that we can have a look at now that we are officially the yes. San Diego Legion podcast? Um, so we've got, we got a cap here. Oh, I don't who wants like to put that on? the snapbacks. You don't? You want to throw you, that on, Drewza? You look great in those, Drew. Sure. I'll just get off Santa's sleigh team for just a minute. I'll get back onto that tonight. <laughs> Oh, there we go. That's there fantastic. Go. And so we'll be, we'll, we'll, we, we will cover your games, Kits. We'll run some highlights in. People can see how you're going. And ultimately, we'll hopefully promote the team enough that they'll pay for us to come to America. Yes. That's the goal. Wouldn't That's it be great goal. to be there for his final game? That would be magic. A dream come true. And uh, I mean, I, I know we've spoken about this a number of times in uh, the podcast and throughout the course of your career, but how's the cash? No. So <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. That's why I didn't want to announce it. Um but no, this one is properly just an opportunity. And properly in the salary cap. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So wait a I'm second. Happy. So you've I'm now got show. two jobs that <laughs> pay you <laughs> nothing. So you've got this and you've got that. And, and they're you... two great opportunities. Probably. Oh, they are. Yeah. Well, I think the Legion's a great opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I took it. Right. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. It's because this is paying. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know where this one's going. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Um, all right. So, uh, look, there is a lot of rugby union happening other than your big announcement. Oh, cheers. Um, to, to yeah, you. congratulations. Oh, so sorry, yes, 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 yes. Hey, come on, you grumpy shit. Oh, it's my fault, isn't Mate, well it? Mate, well done, Luke. <laughs> yeah, thank you. See so how we are. You deserve it, son. Yeah. I reckon I might take old mate off. Yeah, take him off. I think I'm going to do the same. I am no. absolutely racing. Uh, so, obviously, this is our first Tinkle Talk. Can we call it that anymore? Probably not. Yeah. Yeah, Tinkle Talk for the first uh, new show, the Coco Show. Have you got anything on Gits in the last... I haven't, haven't really seen him since we came back from no, France. No. Now you two oh, no, I saw him the, two nights later. I drove down to Canberra for a ball, but he got up early and went to Derby Day. Okay. Hmm. Did you, two, you two went to a Christmas party on the weekend. Have you got anything on each other that happened? You, do you want to tell your story about being Roller Ken? Oh, yeah. I went to my work Christmas party, Burgess Rawson's Christmas party down in Melbourne, went as uh, Rollerblade Ken, and I committed to the Rollerblades. From uh, 6 p.m. start to 2 a.m., I was leaving to go to the hotel and uh, went down a, a hill, came into some oncoming traffic, maybe just tried to avoid it a bit, fell over. So I think it might be a bit infected. I'm a bit sore up the arm and under the yeah, armpits. Right. Glands are up. Yeah, well, the sore arms wouldn't be from lifting. No, nah, these little spaghetti arms don't get much love. These own. should be working at a tuck shop. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did, did you just do an outfit change, lady? Yeah, Yaga? I thought yeah. so. Yeah. Well, I'm still Christmassy, and I thought I should probably rep the Legion yeah, a little bit. It. Yeah, just love for it. I got a Legion. <laughs> you got a Legion, and you got a new outfit as well here. I do. Yeah. Um, all right, so um, it is now time in the show to give mid-show thanks. Um, we would like to give thanks to no one. <laughs> you got anybody you want to give thanks to? The Legion to the Legion, yeah. yeah, to the Legion and to oh, just everyone, everyone. Yeah. Would you like to give thanks to anybody? What about oh, Resolve? You, you Swoop, do you want to? You want to get? You want, I know you're a bit <laughs> new to this. You want to pick up your he's mic? He's talking into his beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I think you got worse. I have, I have. Well, I'd like to give thanks to you, Prof. Thank you, mate. You're right, mate. Very kind of you. Okay, so lots happening in the rugby union world. Mm -hmm. You know, it never stops. Never. It's twelve months of the year. Um, don't know if you've heard, but, and this is out of nowhere, um, Eddie Jones has signed a deal with Japan Rugby as head coach. You're kidding. Well, I didn't see it. I didn't know. See that coming? Through, no. Through to the end of 2028, he starts in a new role on January 1st. Chris Webb, the Wallabies manager, uh, he's going to Japan Rugby as Eddie's team manager. Um, he's I don't been... think he is. Oh. Good, good scoop. What do you got? Uh, no, I think... Webby, that was just a rumour. Okay. I don't think Webby is going. Right, okay. Yep. Okay. Just to clear that up. All right, no, fantastic. Um, don't we're... report shit. But Bad 2028, <laughs> that's after the World Cup. That's a strange appointment. What was his original appointment for us? It was until the World Cup, but it was five years as in last year's World Cup and then leading to the next one, whereas this one is past the World Cup in Australia. Yeah. And then the following World Cup is in America, so I don't... And is this one a joke yeah. one as well, or is this a real one? Do Which you know one? What I'm saying? The Japanese one. Is that a real contract, or is it another joke from Eddie? Well, it looked real. What do you think? Well, I mean, obviously they did the announcement and all that. I mean, we, we can only go by... Oh, well, I guess we'll find out in six months. 
So the uh, press conference though was interesting with the that journalist from Australia. Tom Deason, yeah. yeah. Tom, the, Deason. Tom Deason from Sydney Morning Herald. He's been on it from the get go, like you know, from the, all the times that Eddie was denying having any communication or any contract talks or any interviews, that type of thing. Uh, Tom had some other mail, um, and he stuck at it. And there was, I think there was fourteen times where Eddie uh, denied having any contact with with Japanese rugby. Um, through the course of different press conferences and, and, and things like that through the course of the World Cup and then even post-World Cup. Um, and then Tom flew over to Japan for the press conference um, and just asked him flatly and he said, no, I didn't, uh, I didn't speak to him. My first interview was, I think, December 6th or something around those dates. Um, but since uh, he, he came back and then Tom's got a screenshot from someone, an email that was sent to Eddie and the... Subject title was JRFU first interview Eddie Jones. So they're denying. They're saying that they were just calling him at the time for some Where advice. Where do you reckon that came from? Who would have done that? Let's start just throwing some names up there. Who who did that screenshot? You reckon? <laughs> do you know anybody in the? Camp I like how you asked the question, so you don't have to answer it. <laughs> do you no, actually know thinking. guys? No, no, I, I don't actually I no know. Idea. No, sweep. You're very quiet. No, no idea. I mean, surely, surely JRFU like they'd know. Who was on that e- that email list, right? So like, it can only come down to probably a handful of people. Like, so some, whoever it was will be outed. But um, like, that's pretty damning, right? Like, the subject says first interview, that you don't just sit there and say first interview if it's just for advice on who they who Eddie thinks is the leading candidate, or you know, on, on any of the candidates that maybe they were, they were interviewing at the time. Mm. So. I don't know. I, I feel like at some point, like, you know what? I actually don't give a shit anymore. Like, yeah. he's gone. Like, whether we feel wronged or whether we feel like he should have given us this or that, we're not going to get it anymore. Like, he's put his, the line in the sand, he's put, dug his heels in. He's not going to give us, you know, an apology. He's not going to come out with the truth. Or maybe. Do, do he, you feel, are you, as 3X Wallabies, though, are you pissed off because he came into the team, took out the three most senior players, basically. Ruined our World Cup campaign and then didn't hang around to fix it. He's gone straight to Japan after saying to everybody that he wouldn't. That's so surely uh, you can't be happy with that. So I, I'm pissed off at that point um, because I know the players were put into a game plan that Eddie believed would take them forward for the next World Cup. So they played that style of, of game, you know, believing even if the players disagree with that style, they bought into it thinking that for the next World Cup, it's going to take him forward. And now he's not around uh, to take them forward. That, for me, is, is the most disappointing part because these players put themselves on the line internationally, an international stage, where they're playing a style, um, you're a wannabe, but I'm sure in any sport that you've played or done, you've believed in a game plan or what you're trying to achieve, and you can buy into it. When there's a game plan that you don't buy in, it's very hard to play that style. These guys had to play it at a World Cup, hoping that it's going to take them forward in 2027, then he moves on. So from my point of view, I'm pissed off at that as a former Wallaby because these young guys, you know, it's going to be hard for them to get back up mentally, um, you know, the next time they're playing international rugby and all that type of stuff. From a board point of view, reading what Eddie said, it sounds like he was promised something that they're not delivering on. As far as financially supporting, um, could be coaches or his plan or, or what he, in his um, interview, what he actually asked for, they said that they would deliver and they didn't. Well, the yes, only, po- the only positive just, is I, that... I, as a fan, I want to hear you guys say, I'm pissed off. I know you're pissed, but I want you, like, I'm pissed off. He's he, Mainly because he stood in those press conferences and denied, 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 and now it's happened, but nobody holds him accountable. Nobody... Well, I mean... It's just but not going to happen he's, now. He's, he's, he's said moved that on. He did it after, after, mm. and someone's saying it was before. What do you do? I mean, as a non-wallaby, so you're you're speaking on behalf of people yeah. that haven't played the game. How do you, you you're saying you're pissed off? Oh, absolutely. I'm I like there's moments of a, of Australian sporting embarrassment, mm-hmm. right? So there's the underarm ball. There was you know whatever else. Uh, Yes, sandpaper. sandpaper gate. There was Leighton Hewitt comments about a linesman. Moments where you go, oh, like I'm embarrassed. And the way he carried on yep. in those press conferences in France was embarrassing. And the way that what he did with that team was embarrassing. Now, a direct result has got to be Mark Nawanga Nitawase. Yeah, Nitawase. Right? Yeah. Probably our most our brightest 
rising star, yep, right, exactly, has now yep. decided to go to the Roosters for two years because of what Eddie put him through. Well, it's a very I, weird yeah. time. Is to that go, not fair? Yeah, I mean, it's a weird time. I'm sure there's probably more to Marky's decision to go than just what Eddie put him through, but I'm sure it probably had some. It weighed into it at some point because he, I think, he met with Trent Robinson before he went away, um, and then obviously those contract talks with his agent would have happened. You know, over a course of a couple of months, and he came back, met with them again, and 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 signed the, signed the thing. But yeah, look, I, look, it, it's on all, every level, it's disappointing, right? Like the way that um, you know, basically, as your head coach, you you know, you're a flag bearer for the Wallabies and and for Australian sport at that time, or on the world stage, uh, and and you know, to to get his point around, you know, these young guys in their first World Cups, but it's also some guys that didn't get their last World Cups. You know, we're mm. talking yeah, yeah. Quaidy, uh, Bernard Foley, Michael Hooper, Pete Samu. Um, Jed Holloway, Lenny Kitao, Len, there's yeah. like a number of guys that should have been there, right? Like, and and I've said it before, he said there was going to be a smash and grab, pick a team that's going to win us this World Cup. It, it, it was clear that in some, at some point it, it changed in his mind that he's going to go with development. But then to pick a development squad, well, not a development squad, but a, a, a team to develop for the next four years and then not wait around to actually to be there for that development, I think is a bit weak. Um, and... Yeah, and he might argue that he wasn't being supported resource-wise through some promises that were made from, uh, you know, chairmen and CEOs or wh- whoever th- those promises were made from. But at some point, like, it, it just, you know, if it if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's a fucking duck, right? <laughs> like, Sweep, you've been very quiet on it. I want to ask you, it's actually for all three of you. Let's say, hypothetical, you bump into Eddie. Maybe you're, you know, what you blokes are like, sitting in row 1B, he's in row 1A on a flight. Mm. Mm. Is this pre... <laughs> Pre sleeping tablets. <laughs> yeah, you haven't had to sleep. Little karate chop. No karate <laughs> chop. <laughs> no karate chop. Are you being polite to Eddie? Of Will course. you say to Eddie, Eddie, I mean, what are you doing, mate? I mean, if I mean, it depends on the the environment. Maybe over a couple of beers, you could probably get into that. But at the end of the day, he's just another bloke, and you got to be respectful and say good day. But I think the one thing that he has done is lost a lot of trust and. There's not the current players here, but also the rugby community. So, I mean, in terms of that, I wouldn't be signing any type of contracts or any type of rugby commitments with, with Eddie moving forward just because, I mean, with the year that it played out, you just don't know what you're going to get. And where he's going in his career is very uncertain. What are you saying to him if you sit next to him on a flight? Yeah, I mean, I, you know what? I'd probably be pretty nervous. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I'm someone who... You know, I have my opinions and sometimes they're wrong and but they're mine and um and but I'm also like if they're my opinion I'll I'll at least sit there and explain the context as to how I got to that opinion and I, I'd be more than happy to have that conversation. Um and and I'd be I'd actually be interested into to hearing, you know, like what his answers would be and, and also whether I feel like he's bullshitting me when he's getting to those uh, those answers, right? So I mean it's Look, it, it is one of those things. I'm sure we're going to bump into each other at some point. You know, he might not care what I say. Like, and he probably has a right not to care. Who gives a shit what Drew Mitchell thinks, right? Like, he's doing oh, his I own do. thing. Yeah, thanks, Matt. But he's doing his own thing. He's doing, you know, living his own life. And and unfortunately, though, when you when you take a role with as much responsibility and accountability as a head coach of the Wallabies, then you kind of also have to factor in how much of an impact it has, not just on the players, but also on the fans that buy tickets, that people that flew over to France to, to watch the Wallabies, mm. people who get up in the morning, invest themselves emotionally into the Wallabies, people who maybe not even the biggest rugby fans, but also just are really passionate about Australian sport doing well on the world, on the world stage. And, and you know, like I, I get that maybe he's, he's just, he's running with a rhetoric that he just doesn't want to, you know, expose himself. But at some point, like, you know, one thing that we can only have is our word. And I don't know, I've, I've, again, from what I've got at the moment, the information that I've got, and I feel like his word's not really, doesn't have a huge amount of weight behind it these days. So from what I've got, the information I've got, I feel like he's lied to us. Hey, we have touched on uh, Marky Mark's contract with the Roosters. Did you, uh, I mean, what's your feelings on this? I mean... Two years. I mean, it's disappointing it's that we've lost, you know, yeah. that prospect. Like, Marky Mark had an outstanding year. 25 um, and 26. So, so much potential. And obviously, yeah. you know, the the career that was, uh, I guess, in front of him for him to, to pursue, particularly with the Wallabies, was, you know, an exciting one. So, I mean, to lose him to a game. But you can understand it. Like, the NRL, the game, the product, it's, it's well backed here by... A lot of Australians, it's a great game to watch. I mean, we're all fans of the game as well. Mm. Um, so, you know, given, I guess, off the back of the year that we've seen in rugby and the way rugby league's doing really well at the moment, 
you can you can understand that he probably wants to challenge himself too. He wants to see if he can compete against the best players in the NRL. Um, so I can understand that decision. I mean, I just I'm just it's just a shame that we've lost, you know, uh, such a talent uh, that can have such a big influence at the international level for, for you know for our country. Yeah, I'm look. I'm actually obviously I'm disappointed. I think Mark's a great talent, um, but at the same time, like you know. Kid's got his own ambitions, and he's mm. he's seen an opportunity. He's been given an opportunity. He's, he's gone for it. I don't think it, it doesn't necessarily mean we've lost him forever. Yeah, the door's um, not shut. And you know, the, there's a couple of comments where he said, "You know, I just wanted a new challenge." I mean, you know, he's only 22, 23 years old. Like, you know, <laughs> you, you barely got through your first challenge. You know, like, of course, he's been a starting player for the Wallabies, and you know, love to have seen him to become a mainstay in that in that Wallaby side. Uh, but at the same time, like, you know, he's he's skillful enough. Um, I, I think he's going to a great club. Like it'd be different if he was going to Manly or or um, or the West Tigers or someone yeah, like that. But yeah. you know he's going to have some great tutelage from um, from Trent Robinson and the, and the team there. And uh, I think they'll they'll be able to sort of you know hone his his rugby skills, not just rugby league, but rugby union as well. I think he'll he'll be able to. He, he's the type of guy that'll be able to come back in twenty twenty seven and still make an impact. Uh, whether that means he, he makes the World Cup or not, who knows? But um, you know, I don't think it's it means that we've we've lost him forever. I just think you know sometimes when you've got opportunities, um, you've you've got to explore them. And and um, yeah, like I said, it's 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 disappointing. And maybe there was a bit of uncertainty around chairman, you know, the the the, the coaching setup, everything like that, that made it probably a little bit easier for him to make that decision. Who knows? Um, mm. They're just you know they're that's for Marky to, to answer if he wants to but uh, look I, I, I think he's great I'll, I'll definitely be tuning in and, and watching him play um, I, I wish him well and but I also wish that he does come back at some point if you love someone set them free <laughs> and if they come back to you it was meant to be uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what nice. you're saying yeah beautiful so hopefully I mean missing 2025 mm. yeah it's a weird weird yeah, time lines, it's but with contracts I've never really asked any questions of any players because everyone's got their own decisions why they're doing things um you just wish him all the best it, like swoop said it's sad that we've lost him um and the timing around 2025 like i well i was a retired player i'm coming back for a little bit but i think the lines is probably beyond my reach that was something that i never oh, got the opportunity to scoop, <laughs> no oh. no it's g up like oh, seriously oh, there's always truth behind uh, i never got the opportunity to play in a lions series and i was with willie genya in uh, japan in an interview, and he said that the British and Irish Lions, when he played in Australia, was bigger than the World Cup final in 2015. You so said that, didn't you, Swoop, as well? well? It was a big build-up. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it's just something that you're having back at home. It's just a massive opportunity for him. But, as I said, every player, they make their own decisions on their contract for their own personal reasons. So you can never really ask questions. Mm. All right, very good. Now, the Sevens has already started mm. for the year. Um, How good are the women going? Girls are oh, killing oh, it. Back to back. We won both in Dubai and Cape Town. Mm. Um, Charlotte Caslick, Tegan Levi, and Maddie Lip. They're all killing it on the scene yeah. at the moment. And then the boys, uh, they made the final in Cape Town. So both sides doing very well. And of course, we have it coming up uh, in Perth on the 26th to the 28th of January. Um, so surely uh, at home they'll do well. Winter hoops. Well, he's tipped to play in the Perth, yeah. the Perth tournament. Um, that's his debut. So, I, I'm, have you run into him, boys? Is he slimmed down? Is he doing I don't know anything if different? Need to slim down too much. Like he's always been, you know, like cardio is one, you know, and his work rate been one of his, you know, greatest assets. So, um, I mean, maybe he won't be as bulky, but I don't think we'll see a huge shift in his his physical stature. But um, I spoke to a couple of the, the sevens people, like uh, some of the male players, and they're saying that there is there is a Michael Hooper effect. Ooh. already like how many how much media is down to their training these days and and just uh you know obviously that side of thing in terms of the eyeballs going on to and the interest around it because of michael hooper's decision obviously mm. it was in the in the initial stages of, of his um of of his annou announcement but i think what they'll you know the michael hooper effect will be greater than that it'll be you know the standards around training and and you know the, the mental application going into games and and uh, and the leadership that he brings even if he's not out there in a, in a leadership role like just you know, being the type of player that he is at training, in his recovery, in his analysis, in his review, all that sort of stuff, um, I think there'll be a Michael Hooper effect. So I'm actually really looking forward to seeing him play. And and I don't know, there's it, the Michael Hooper effect may go beyond Australian shores because soon after Michael Hooper signed with the Wallabies, oh sorry, the Australian Sevens team, Antoine Dupont 
the French halfback, <laughs> he signed to play uh, for France yeah. at the Olympics next year as well. So And so uh, he's not playing Six Nations. So I, th- I think he's withdrawn from the Six Nations, so he can do the same type of thing and actually be involved in the build-up for the French Sevens team going into the into the Paris Olympics. Uh, I think maybe a couple of other players, Damien Pinot, um, sorry, Louis... Bayel, Bayel, yeah, yeah, one of the, the winger for, for France. Apologise for not knowing your name uh, on hand, but there's a few players putting their hands up for from the French side to play, and uh, I think we'll probably see a few more internationals play for the seven side as well next year. Well, it's the whole Paris gold medal that we're looking at, 2024. Mm. Um, which will you be calling there? Will you be? I'll be calling it, yeah, for Channel Nine. For Channel Nine, yes, just for Channel Nine, which is fantastic. Um, and obviously, you'll be talking to them about us going and doing shows. In Paris, yeah. So Lord I've, knows that went well for Swoop <laughs> during the World Cup. I think it did well for Swoop. I did Everyone too. understands, like the guy, how much like he switch on, switch off. He was amazing. You were kick on, kick off, Mate. Coco. You, you were, were. Coco. I was very Coco. You were, you were very Coco. Coco. Yeah, appreciate um, it. Obviously, Matty Levi, she's the fastest player to reach 107 tries, yeah. which is wow. only 15 tournaments. Yeah, she's killing it. Do you she's think you it. could beat her in a race? Ooh, not now, now, obviously. No, no but like not. in your... When was the last time you won a race? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Should we have a fucking beer race now? <laughs> I think we mate, should. That's so shit. Well, hang yeah. on a second, mate. Tommy's house. You just pulled yeah. that all over my shoes. Your what? Roger Federer shoes. Yeah, yeah. your ons. Uh, we all right with these helicopters, Hugo? We're okay. Keep going. There's helicopters if you're listening. We're in an absolute flight path here. Yeah, we yeah. are. Hey, um, yeah, and obviously the Aussie girls are looking good for gold in uh, in Paris. And, you, mate, you'll be there cheering them on with us. Well, I don't know if I'll be there. Oh, you might be calling from I here. might be calling off tube back yeah, here in Sydney. Fine. So hopefully uh, we do get the opportunity to go to Paris. But either way, I'll be uh, I'll be calling the, the Sevens at the Olympics next year. There's no reason that we can't go, though. No, the three of us yeah. and then you stay well, in Sydney and yeah. call off tube. <laughs> That, there's your reason why you guys can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who had the last prawns? Mate, Prof had the last prawns. You got the last one, mate. Fight. We polished them off. They were good. Well yeah, done, thanks, Drew. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Only seventy bucks a kilo. How many you kilos do you get? A couple. What percentage yeah, but, of a kilo do you think of prawn you actually consume? Well, that's the thing. I asked them to peel them for me, <laughs> and then weigh it. Well, no, then they said um, that's going to take half an hour. I was like, time's money, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not your money though you're not, pay- you're not paying for him to work No I think you've got to pay it. extra to get him to peel it but Is I just it need your to get time that's money? Yeah. Or yeah. their time? You're I don't on, know you're on I just wanted to get out I just didn't want to sit there for half an hour While a couple of people pr- 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 peeled my prawns oh, So I did You went the big ones though? Yeah Big Jeez, king good. tigers? I don't know they were just big Big they were big <laughs> mm. If you are that in the UK and, and your nan's cooked a roast or something for, for Christmas Say where's the fucking prawns then? Yeah Nan! <laughs> Are the Bronx? <laughs> she can never Fuck! hear me back there. Um, <laughs> so, in other rugby union news, oh, uh, there's more news. There is Owen Man, Farrell is stepping stop. away from England duties. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, it's, this is a bit of a sad story. Um, he's stepping away from international rugby in 2024. He'll continue to play for Saracens uh, in the European leagues, but he's stepping away to pri- t- prioritise his family and his own mental health. Now, they're saying that a lot of it's linked to the abuse online of social media, um, which is very sad. I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't understand why he's copying it. Maybe you can shed some light on it. Um, I don't understand why he's copying it. Oh, no, it there's, really well. there's no justification for it. If you go yeah. online and you, you spray someone, you're a piece of shit, right? Mm. Like, and it's only because you're online that you're doing it. You're not going to go up to Owen Farrell and say that no. to his face, right? Like, and that's unfortunately the, the world we live in. Um, because of social media, we're now further exposed. Everyone, when I say we, I'm talking about everyone because you know I know that kids go home from school and cop it. Like it, it's you know no one's immune from it, right? Yeah. Um, and it's 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 a coward act, uh, and it's unfortunate because you don't know what type of impact it has on people because it's varying, right? Like someone may be able to tolerate it to a degree, others may not. Um, and I, look, I, I think it's a great decision from him. Like he's putting himself first. Good on him. Um, and he's and obviously to your other point, he's putting his family first as well. Um, I think it's shit that it's come to this. We, we've heard Wayne Barnes, the referee, he retired. He, he spoke to the same type of stuff. Well, Tom Foley, Tom as well, Foley, the uh, the TMO, yeah, he, he, the him fine. as well. Um, look, I, I can understand. We all get frustrated. I, I mean, I've probably said some things at, at times that I'm probably not proud of. I've gone back and and thought, you know, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, I I get it. Like sometimes it can can happen easily but when you i don't know i just think that that type of stuff's just got to be eradicated um and 
And if you do say something, maybe follow it up with an apology or, or something like that because, you know, like this guy's going out there and he's doing his best. He's buying his trade on in a public uh, environment, but that doesn't mean to say that it gives anyone the right to go out there and, and, uh, and take pot shots and, and to a point where it's now affected him being able to do what he loves and, and, and be able to provide for his family and all that. So, uh, look, I, I think he's, look, he's obviously a great player. Um, I know that I, I called England in total as a bit of a basket case, uh, but I thought, you know, we spoke about it through our World Cup shows. Well, he, t- that so his performance—he wasn't playing when you were calling. No, no, yeah, case. well, that's why. But, but also, no, but, you were asked for your opinion. Yeah, yeah. If you're going online spraying someone, and not just spraying the actual person, then you spray their family. Like seriously, like there's yeah. not yeah, one it's part all of me watching a game that I think, oh gee, I'm going to go tweet um, Wembenyana. I know you love love him, Wemby. Yeah, yeah, I know you love Wemby. I know you love the Spurs. If he doesn't get his his rebounds that I've bet on him for, if he doesn't get them, I'm not going to You don't let him know about it. Well, I, well, I also think... I love the NBA, but one, I'm not going to go online and spray him or yeah. then spray his mm. family. Like, it's just the logic of these people. Um, there's, there's two different types of criticism as well. You can criticise someone's game because that's, you know, it's performance and it's like, you know, like you miss a tackle, you do this and that. But when it's, it's integrity or if it's in family or if it's something personal when you don't know them or anything like that, I think that's just a no-go. Um, and, you know, I think there's probably been too much of that go on uh, for, for Owen, but also I think there's you know, plenty of players out yeah, there who probably cop it. It yeah. happens all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I just think the whole situation's sad. Um, Six Nations is such a big tournament. Uh, I know everyone over in in you in Europe, they love to be a part of that tournament. Um, so if you're Owen to step away, it's a big call. Yeah. Uh, but you support him in it. You know, he's made a stance. Uh, he wants to prioritise himself and the family. Good on him. Uh, but I think it's shit that this online bullying oh, still no. exists. Like, I don't know no. how you get on top of it. Just but. a lack of awareness, really. That's yeah. all it is. Like, words are powerful, you know. Yeah. I think, from what I know of Alan Farrell and his performances, like, he's a strong, he's mm. a competitor, he's a strong character. It's obviously just worn him down over time. So, I think for him to put his hand up and say I'm stepping away is really brave and yeah. a courageous decision. I think it's a great one. So, I'm hoping that, you know, moving forward, the break that he um, that he takes on is, you know, a beneficial one. He comes back, he's better, and he's, you know, he comes back to continue to to influence the game of rugby. I hope the world corrects itself. I, ho- I know social media and online trolling and everything is only a new thing. I hope the world finds a way to get around it. Well, I mean, it's, you know, tracking people based on their uh, location and punching them right. Well, in the no, face. I, I think every social media account should be attached to someone's license 100%. or some type yeah. of ID because oh, yeah. you know there's too yeah. many bots. You it's know, like you know yeah. Darcy and all of that. Oh, Darcy um, real. Why would he <laughs> no, no, that, but but I no. Well, I, Darcy I, head off. She was. A I, I think that it stops burner <laughs> accounts. It's Sorry, stop, it stops burner accounts. It stops people from being able. Like there's all, all of a sudden there's more accountability because you can be tracked, you can be traced, and you can be held accountable. Just, mm. Though, if you are using a burner account for positive. Like, say, I've got oh, one yeah, right right now. Uh, prof's on fire again. <laughs> yeah, burn away. Great sign. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, that's but that's also trolling because it's giving no. you a misconception. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, so a lot is happening in the world of Australian rugby. We still don't have a coach. Lots mm-hmm. of chat around Joe Schmidt. Um, Schmitty. Feelings. Schmitty, if he came in, obviously he revolutionised Ireland. Look where they are now. Um, are you pro Schmitty? I don't know much about Schmitty, to yeah, be I'm fair. Same. Like, I, know Schmitty. You know, I like I saying mean, I, Schmitty. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I like you to, like ordering a Schmitty. Yeah. A chicken a a palmy. Schmitty yeah, Palmy. Yeah, I actually had like a Schmitty and chips and gravy last night. Is yeah, it? I think he's obviously a good coach. Um, yeah, track records there, whether we want an Aussie um, taking us forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know about, like, there's a lot of chat about, you know, we need an Australian coach in Australia. Like, we just no, had I wasn't one. saying that. No, 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 I'm not just saying, no, I'm not saying for you, but like I'm saying from things I've read. Like, you know, we've just had one. Look where that got us. You know, mm. like, I don't think it necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be because of where they grew up or, you know, their you know, um, country of origin or whatever. I mean, we're in a position where we just need the best candidate, right? And uh, if it's Joe Schmidt, if it's Stephen Larkham, if it's Dan McKellar, if it's Michael Checker, whoever else is, is being put forward, then based on their merits and what we need at the, this moment, if they're the best person to to get us to where we need to be, then... I don't give a fuck where he's from or her. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, I, I think they've disappointed. Is it Peter Horn as the high performance manager? Did he get the yeah, job, Peter Horn? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah Peter Absolutely. Horn. So, uh, you know, from all reports, he's very good at, um, you know, at what he does. And, and so I would imagine the head coach will work really closely uh, with Peter Horn. Um, and I think they've made some, um, some appointments in the, the women's setup as well. 
um, forgive me, but I've just re- forgot to name the new Wallaroos coach. But the good thing is we're starting to make some some good appointments. Uh, soon we'll have a, a Wallabies coach, I'm sure, once they go through the process. And uh, yeah, I mean, whether I, Joe Schmidt's got the runs on the board. Um, he did some great things with Ireland. He was also involved in the, the All Blacks setup for a period of time, consulting and, and, and helping them out. So he's clearly got some IP. Um, and I don't know if there's any, really anyone that you speak to in world rugby that's got anything bad to say about him. That's not a bad indication. Mm. Uh, probably, probably should have asked a few more people before we picked our last candidate, but <laughs> like those well, types of things, because in, no, because I think in, in world rugby, your, your reputation travels fast, right? And it, and that's all we've got sometimes is our reputation. And it's because of, you know, our word and how we act and, and decisions we make and, and what we live by. So from, a, from all reports, Joe Schmitz, you know, stands up, he's a stand up guy in, in those regards. But um, I don't know who else the actual candidates are. So, I mean, there's, you know, you read a different report or article. There's always other people being thrown in. I don't know if Dan McKellar, I'm pretty sure he said he's yeah, not available. He said no. Yeah, 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 but even still, like, I still see his name bandied around. Um, you know, whether Stephen Larkham's genuinely interested, uh, you know, whoever else. Um, I'm not too sure. Yeah, you've got Michael Checker as well. Um, how is this guy not in stand? Mate. Hmm. Yes, Did you apply that. for a job? Or yeah. <laughs> what happened? No, I was told um, they're going in a different direction. Fair enough. Really? So, well, luckily, we got him, and he's in our direction. Mm. Mate, you you are. I'm gonna. You're the best rugby pundit in the world. <laughs> yeah. Ever. Oh, you don't have Ever. to. You don't have to lie. No, fair to I'm, I'm, I'm aware of my shortcomings. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the best. No. I'm up there, but I'm not no. the best. <laughs> I think we've got the best three in the world on this show. Yeah. Big round of applause from the production yeah. staff. And we've also got Swoop. <laughs> um, the last one there is Dan Herbert replacing Hamish McLennan. We yep. have gone heavy on the rugby here. Yeah, very. Um, well, there's been yes. a bit going on. There since, has. We yeah. haven't been on in a while. Yeah, anyway, former player, um, played for Wallabies. He obviously gets what um, team culture and everything's about. So I think it's a good appointment. Yeah, he's, he's got some runs on the board business corporate-wise as well. So, uh, look, from all reports, he's um, he's going to be firm. He's going to be you know pretty strong in, in his position on, on things. Yeah. Um, and again, he's he's someone that uh, he comes you know pretty highly regarded. I you know Hamish obviously, you know he tried to dig his heels in a little bit, and uh, I think he said he wanted to show his kids that you know you don't quit. And but I think you know what he's shown after that's probably been even more disappointing. Just the way he sort of um, tried to get out in front of it and and blame everyone else and and not take that accountability that he um, that he probably should have taken. Um, I'm sure you know of course not everything that happened is on him. But some significant parts were, and at some point you got to fall on your sword. Yeah. And, um, you know. Anyway, he's he's moved on, um, and yeah, Dan, Dan Herbert's in the role. And look, as bad as last year was, or this year, you know, like this campaign has been, and we've lost Eddie Jones, we've lost Hamish. As bad as it was to get to this point, it's actually not a bad point to be at now because we can almost start afresh. Um, you know, Phil Wall's quite newly appointed in the CEO position just before the World Cup, um, and we're going to have a new head of high performance, Wallaby's head coach, chairman. Uh, the the whole uh, women's side of things in their high performance and head coach uh, is all new. So if we get the positions and the candidates and the selections right, then there is, you know, because everyone keeps talking about this golden decade, like we're, we're a few week, few years into this golden decade. There's never a golden decade. It was an opportunity for a golden decade. And so far, three years in, we've not taken that opportunity. Well, it resets now yeah. because the Coco show is launching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, they said that. And so now it's a decade from now. Swoop. So twenty thirty three. Is there anything going on in Olympics twenty thirty two Brisbane? Mm. Twenty thirty three. Yeah. Wow. We win the Bledders low back. <laughs> <laughs> no, earlier. Earlier than that. Um do you have anything to say about Dan? Nah. Did you, did you ever do, smash him? Did you ever fold him? Never played him. Thankfully, yeah, he would have. Uh, did you fold him? He was a bit no, of a beast. I didn't fold, definitely didn't fold him. But he used to travel with his own magnetic um, layer. Really? Like, um, on top of his mattress. Oh, I like for that. For recovery and like he was mo- in front of everyone else. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's almost like uh, Terminator a little bit when I first came in 2002. He's solid, eh? He used to look after himself. Okay. I say he used to just because I saw his press conference and it doesn't look like he's still <laughs> on that same magnetic mat. But I think he's going to be okay. great he's for a busy Australian man. Rugby. He's a busy man. Uh, hey, guys, that's the end of the rugby chat. And well yes. done to you all. You yeah. have not lost a step in the break. Finger on the pulse. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Biv. I know. Why did Mate, Stan there's been a few times go? since I've seen you guys where I thought I didn't have a pulse. Fucking <laughs> 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 hell. Fucking hell. Talk hey, about kick-offs and kick-ons. <laughs> what's been, what's been your there? biggest party? Um, what's the loosest thing you've done since we last saw you? Oh. 
Do no. your top five regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I don't have any regrets. No. no, I just, you know, I just like to enjoy myself a little bit, and sometimes yeah. it goes a bit too far. But that's why we love um, you, mate. Sun- Sundays are usually I average around a thousand steps for the Sunday. That's it. <laughs> I don't do much on Sundays. Yeah, right. Um, you get to the front door when the Uber's yeah. delivering off a nice little. Yeah, but no, I just it's festive season. Yeah. We went pretty hard on Saturday, swoop. You Did and we? I, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Did we? Thanks for Did bringing me into it, mate. Well, mate, I don't drink on my own. Did Swoop have a go? <laughs> Swoop had a bit of a go. He, he was tag teaming. Well, hold on. Hang on a second. He and his wife were alternating. Okay. Duties. I'm babysitting party. you. Back, back. Yeah. No, no, okay. because they had a babysitter. They had to keep going back and checking on. So we had intermittent holiday Swoop. But oh, yeah, I can't wait to get it. It was back. good. <laughs> Super round. What's that? March 1 to 3rd. Mm. Holiday swoop hard. Have you got that Hawaiian shirt still? I've locked it away. Yeah, I've locked it away. <laughs> Book your tickets. <laughs> hey, hey, it is Christmas. It, it is. is. And if we had money in a sponsor, we'd be playing a Christmas tune right now. But we can't afford Do you want me to sing one? Do you Please. Mind? Just while I chat. <laughs> Can we afford that? No, we can't. We can't, we can't afford that. So, uh, it is time. Dreaming. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. Why? Christmas. <laughs> we, can, we, can't okay, sorry. we can't afford it. So it is time now. Yes. We, we chatted about this. It is time now for the present giving because yes. we are all good mates now. Secret Santa. Like we are the Coco Show and we've each been handed a secret Santa. Tommy um, Tommy was in charge of it and he fucked it up completely. He yes, massively. Two, <laughs> he, gave, he? he gave two <laughs> of us Drew. <laughs> yes. Did I get two gifts? No. no. Oh, Thankfully, we, Gits rang me. Oh, you dogs. No, I rang just to check off a couple of things. He what do you said, mean? Well, he said, mate, I'm thinking about getting this for Drew, and I'm like, mate, I've, I've got Drew. So, I mean, it's difficult. Four names. Each person has one yeah. name. Yeah, real tough talk. Who was going to miss out originally in that list? Me. <laughs> Told you, they fucked me over the shit, Mike. <laughs> Drive all the way out from Canberra, not oh, to mate. get a present. Oh, mate. Tolls, distributor. No, no, mate. He's time. Busy. Traffic. Time is money. Mm. <laughs> time, time is money. Mate. Get a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> not waiting for prawns. Yeah. I'm not waiting for you to peel me prawns, mate. <laughs> but then I'll be filthy when I'm peeling them myself. <laughs> so, so, I think we do this. I'm going to start with you, Drew, because you've told me you've gone to no effort. Yeah. Tell us who you've got and what you've given. Oh, we'll wait for Giddy to come back from doing a wee wee. No, I was going to. Oh. No, 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 sorry, oh, no, no, Drew, Drew's going to give his present to his yeah. secret Santa. That's why I thought he would have had to go through and talk about it holding his hand, so I put the mic in front of him. I'm here going. Okay. Thanks for having me, though. So, uh, it, it is Christmas and it is uh, it is tradition. Yeah, give. so I didn't I didn't have any um, sticky oh. tape, so I've actually used boob tape, what the girls use on their nipples. Really? Really? You had that line around. double-sided stuff. No, I had some of that line around. Why is that in your house? How did you have that line around? Oh, sometimes I need to get these bad boys <laughs> covered up. Um, no, I don't know why I had it there, but uh, I had it there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be wrapped. Um, I That's didn't. Wonderful. I like I said, I had a bit. Of, I pushed the boat out on the weekend, so I didn't put too much thought into this. I went there this morning. I've had Adam. Oh, uh, this is for Adam. It's nice. So it's not that secret. I had an idea for Swoop because if this one didn't work out. Yeah. I was having to get him something. Well, so. I actually went to great lengths this morning. I did make a bit of an effort, but then that fell through. So then this is the secondary one with no effort. Okay. Um, I tried to get you a tongue so you could talk more. <laughs> 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 Thought maybe this new iteration of our show, you could maybe actually have some input. Mm. I couldn't get the tongue, so I guess we're just going to have to put up with you just being a spectator. <laughs> <laughs> but you might be a spectator in some um, really fashionable crops. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that's they well over good. the thirty dollars. I know, budget. but I, also it was thirty dollars budget. Thirty dollars budget, but I mean, I couldn't even get this guy a fucking McDonald's meal for thirty bucks. Like that's a piece of shit. Like if you guys stuck to thirty bucks, I'm going to be off you. I didn't. Know, it was thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there you go. I tried to get oh, a couple I of those. It requires more effort if it's less. Yeah, but really like think. I said, I, I didn't. I didn't have too much time. Is that the right size? Twelves? Yeah, Are you a twelve? Yeah, yeah. yeah underneath. Very good. All right, let's let's tick this thing along. Yeah. yeah, and put and them in are, sports mode with them at the back. Are you? Are you? A it's sh- just like I just thought it was like a, yeah. every dad's got a pair of Crocs yeah. going down the park with their kids. I thought, yeah, Swoop needs a pair of Crocs. And you, you are a chef or a surgeon, aren't you? Are you one of those two? Because nobody <laughs> else really wears. <laughs> he can wear them to his twelves and twos. Could be my pod, my pod, pod shoes. Love it. All right, what did you got, Drew? Who did you? Uh, sorry, Swoop. Who did you get given, and what have you got? Do you want to? You can throw this. I had. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I keep doing that. Just. 
And you, Prof? Hey, all you, right. Mate. Yeah, so there you go. Prof nut? Prof got me. A little bit similar. Look, not much this be shit. time <laughs> and effort. Yeah, look, I know you like hey, your... Oh, I need a new bloody I know you hat. like your hats. Oh, oh, I need a new, new one. hat. But also... Uh, oh. oh, I need a new Derek hat. That's very good. Yeah, just in case you forget where you're Swoop. from. Yeah. I saw one of those yesterday at Did those little $2... Oh, I love that's, that. That's not $2. That, this wasn't from the $2 shop. No. <laughs> but I saw it, and the reason I didn't get it, because I had someone else, the reason I didn't get it didn't have a draw, the draw, you know, where you can tighten it up. Yeah. Well, you know, with just the current UV ratings, yeah. Prof, it's going to be a hot summer, mate. I want you to look after Thank yourself, you, right? Oh, you're a good guy. Sunscreen, slip slop. Thanks, mate. 50 plus So the two. sunscreen was fifty plus, 28 mate. bucks, and then the hat was two. Pretty much. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Bill. That's very festive. Uh, now, I do have you, uh, Gits. My don't sigh. No, I mean, no I'm a tight ass. No. I got you a few things. There's there's that to start with. That's oh, lovely. Oh, nice. Oh, protein Tom, bar. We like them too, BSC. BSC. Yeah, we do like and good then, friends of BSC. Um, that there, that's protein custard, mate. <laughs> so, <Wow. laughs> let's hold that up for the camera. <laughs> So, I don't know. Wow. Have you been eating normal custard? Because you can <laughs> get protein yeah, custard well. now. I shouldn't have been. Oh, I love got, my custard. How and then the know? last, and that, so that brought me to $29. And then this, just open that uh-huh. and just have a look at what that is. And just, just open it up and just. Uh, here we go. Oh, it's you might need to ask me what it is. <laughs> Certificate of insurance. It's life insurance, mate. Because <laughs> you're going to America oh. and people have a lot of guns there. And wow, it's good coverage. Yeah. 30 million pounds. 30 million, 30 million pounds. pounds. So um, I think we're worth, it's probably a nice decision to cut me. Yeah. <laughs> like properly. Yeah. So like do you think, oh, the only thing is it, oh, it is in there if your wife shoots you, it doesn't count. So right. you got to. Well, she won't shoot me. What if she stabs me? Well, I don't, I haven't, I, we didn't go into stabbings. Oh, that's dark. This is actually a pretty good opportunity to fund this podcast for next oh, year, yeah, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you're into I'm happy to write a sponsorship for the podcast <laughs> pre-death. Oh, yeah. that's not bad. You leave yeah. us the podcast. Yeah. Oh, not all of it. I reckon probably 200 pound. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's something. It's more than we got now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, good luck in America. Thank you. Um, well, that leaves Merry me Christmas. with Biv. I've got you two things. Oh. Okay. So, the first one, I'm going to hang on to that. Okay. Actually, no, I'll give you that one. Okay, sure. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Law <Lord> for dummies. <laughs> yeah. I I'll just be... thought you never know yeah. when you could use. Oh, Johnny Ventura. Law, He's one of the great. Um... Suing anyone or whatever's happening. <laughs> just in case I'm. I'm not suing a network, just one bloke. No, but I. I yeah. I. No, I, I didn't I know anything. It. I mean, I mean yeah. keeping up with the news. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> and then this one, just in case that yeah. one fell flat. That's why I rang Prof. I was like, sure. Oh, and he told me he that I nearly fell off oh, the bike. It's hey, very funny. Twenty nine fifty. You've already hit the the mark. I, I told you I didn't. I didn't go to cheap. Then these ones. Hey, filled with beer. Oh, oh mate, that's, great. that's amazing. So it's like a beer. Um, Pole. A beer popsicle. Slushy? Beer, like beer, ice, uh, ice, uh, ice block. Ice, ice block, I suppose. How did you transport them from Canberra? So, that's the thing. There's a lot of mm. effort. Uh, Delicious. It was great northern. Uh, I know you like great can northern. We, oh, there's the four right of those. There's or four we, of yeah. <laughs> so, I use this no, no, Yeti you cooler. Yeah. You're a numbers man. No, I use this I'm Yeti cooler on a three-hour drive. Ah, explains the Yeti. <laughs> to keep ah, it. Is that what you've got there? I didn't want it to go soft. I know. Our good friends at Yeti. So, good friends at Yeti. And I filled it with ice. and. So, is that mine as well? Oh, the problem with that is I need to walk it back. It's got uh, my car keys in it. Oh, right. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Here you go, Prof. Here we go. Let's try that. Oh, this is great. Um, again, if you're in the UK at Christmas, ask Nan oh, for one of these. Oh, Yeah, it swoops. Yes. Oh, I don't mind oh, I'm that. surprised that one. Actually, don't worry about it. Give that one to That's fine. Oh, wow. Right. Well, no, my press is broken. <laughs> you want some of that? <laughs> but you got some. Yeah, I've tried. And I say? reckon if you hang yeah. on that long enough, you can mm. spoon. You can um, spoon it. All right, so... That was the present giving. Yeah. Happy Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas, guys. Wonderful. Wonderful yeah. stuff. Um, all right. So, uh, hey, guess what we've got? Ding, ding, ding. Christmas quiz. quiz. Yes. hey <clears throat> What do we call it? Uh, <laughs> what's the theme? It's Christmas. The theme is Christmas. No, wasn't there like... A, he said the Christmas quiz. Yeah, but like, have you paying... Have you, oh, sorry, yes. Oh, no, you've been watching heaps, but we... Because yeah. it's not really stuff it, that we've been watching. Okay. Mm. I see what you mean. Yeah. I should have come up with something. That's okay. Are you festive, maybe? Yeah. No, you, it's fine. It's fine. The I moment's mean, gone. 
Oh, you've been about a six out of ten today, so we'll let it slide. Thank you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, that was a big number of six. <laughs> I thought that was good. Like, that's right. <laughs> That's a bloody good outing for me. Um, all right, let's go. Question number one. This uh, quiz, just a reminder, is written, is brought to you by Tommy Erskine. Yes. Yeah. Who could not work out Chris Kringle between four people. Mm. So we'll see how this goes. In the famous Christmas song, The 12 Days of Christmas, which one of the birds referenced in the song has the quickest cooking time? Of course, it's about cooking food with Tommy. A, six geese are laying. Is it geese? B, seven swans are swimming. Is it a swan? C, three French hens, chicken. D, two turtle do- doves, two turtle doves. So is it goose, swan, chicken, or dove? What goose. has the quickest cooking time? Goose, lock yeah. in. Goose. A. So goose, swan, swan, chicken, or dove? Going dove. Dove. Chicken. Ding, 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 chicken. You're uh, not doing the old purple really? no, shoulder. Really? No, nah, he definitely can't not. Really? Because there's not much flesh to a dove. I thought that'd go quick. Well, uh, an hour sure. and 45 minutes for Christmas. Yeah, but Chooks, they're, they're bigger than a dove, mate. Oh, I didn't even hear the question. I thought there was something in a song. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, just the <laughs> uh, four birds from the song, but what's, yeah, yeah, how, yeah, how, how, what's their quickest time the cooking time? I, I tuned out. I, only, I know, I only heard the half. I was thinking the partridge. Yeah. You should be listening. You're already singing the song. Question number two. Jimmy Patton famously saw into the future. When he called Eddie Jones a traitor, what award should the Australian people give him? A, Australian of the Year, B, Father of the Year, C, Sick <laughs> of the Year, or D, All of the Above? That's a good question. Is he a father? Eddie. Oh, it could be a trick yeah, question. Family's there. What? No, he's no, not. We're talking about the, Aren't we talking about Jimmy? Sorry, about Jimmy. The, the, yeah, talking about Jimmy. Jimmy Sorry. The punter. Is Jimmy a father? Yeah. He's the father of our nation. Is, it, is he the one when at the uh, the SCG is yeah. came in and say it? I reckon I've, we've had a few people uh, comment on our, our um, social saying we should get him on and interview him. So Jimmy Patton, if you're watching, I can reach out. Um, I think D. Oh, I didn't rate it at the time, um, and now? so I'm not going to go all of the above. No, I still reckon. Do you no, think no, it's you... a bit like that bullying. With um, I'm not going to support it. I'm going Ooh. E. Oh, but is so it? We use the B word. But is it not? We've got to back away. Is it bullying <laughs> if it's factual? I don't know. I, this is the question. This is really tricky, no, Drew. You put me in. I'm not <laughs> saying it is factual either. That's also a rhetorical question. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I, I'm uh, happy to strike two from the record. Do we want to get rid of that question? Yeah. 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 Tommy, it's. But we, we can let that air, though. Oh, will you? I'm just saying you guys don't need to give an answer. And mm. Jimmy Patton reach out to Although me. Drew did say D. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. Uh, question number three. Which evil Dr. Zeus character famously ruined everybody's Christmas? A, Ebenezer Scrooge. B, The Grinch. C, Jack Frost. Frost D, Hamish McLennan. <laughs> These are punchy, Tommy. I like this. It's B or D. I'm going to go B. <laughs> I'm going to go B. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go B. I'm with B. I'm with Drew. I'm B. B. <laughs> Correct. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, so you're still leading 2-1-1. One, one. Uh, which of these Christmas-themed rugby league players won the 2011 to 2012 Top 14 Rugby Man of the Year Award? Is it A, Ben Lamb? B, Henry Slade? C, Billy Twelve Trees? Or D, Chris Masoe? <laughs> Christmas Owie. Oh, it's not Christmas Owie. Oh, we play with him. Yeah, but 2011. Mm. 2011. Is he not dominating that? At cast. I don't what was think it the Billy Tall Trees was. What award? No. 2011 to 2012 Norris. Top 14 Man of the Year Award. Oh, Man, Man of, of the, the year. year. They don't do that. It's Player of the Year, but um, yeah, Mussy, I think. It must be Mussy. Yeah, before I got over there, everyone oh. was talking about him at cast. Christmas Owie. Oh, yeah, Christmas Owie. Oh. Now you like conferring with each other. It's, you know you're competing against each other. Yeah, you know, I know. we didn't think Sweet was listening. Yeah, but it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Great Are we right? Spirit. Yeah. Uh, ding, ding, ding. DDD. Yeah. Uh, who received the biggest pile of cash this Christmas? Is it A, Eddie Jones with Japan Rugby? Mm-hmm. B, Mark Key Mark signing for the Roosters? C, gets his new San Diego <laughs> Legion contract? We knew that was coming. Or D, Drew's legal team? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? I don't get it. Um, I'm going to go D. Tom, what's it mean? D. You going D? Yeah. <laughs> Is it costing you a fortune? <laughs> no, but they get, it's on a win. 
Ah, I don't know. look, it's punchy. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck it, you got to stand up for yourself, don't you? Yeah, hundred percent. I reckon for legal reasons, you should probably go A, B, or C. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go because you said it wasn't about the cash. No, it I'm going to go isn't. A. I'm A. Correct. Ding, ding, ding. Eddie Jones will have the oh, largest contract. <laughs> <laughs> don't know how you can emphatically say that when you don't know what his contract's worth. I'll send it to you tonight. Yeah. It's not. not. All right. Congratulations. Yeah, but Swoop. also the legal team. Mm. Like, how much are they going to win? Yeah. Congratulations, Swoop. Uh, you are the winner of the Christmas quiz. Right, Swoop. So smart. Um, so, hey, gents, we are coming to the close. Uh, all that's left to do is to pump up the new show next year. Yeah, Coco. Um, the Coco show. Now that we've show. got a name. Yeah. Um, kick so it's off kick offs and kick ons. That's no, kick on. Uh, no, kick it's kick offs. Yeah, yeah. We got to start the game and then we get a kick yeah. on after. I yeah. also when I yeah. when you sent or when we saw kick offs and kick ons, I thought the kick offs was on. He's bloody kicked off again. Oh, oh, oh losing shit! Couple, oh, couple of different right. play on. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Well, maybe that's what they were meaning, but I took it as we're going to talk a bit of rugby. The kick off. Yeah. Now let's talk about the real stuff. The kick ons. Mm. So many levels, so many layers. So we are starting February fifth. The Coco Show. Coco. Uh, the plan is. 30 to 40 shows if we can get sponsors Oof. every week. It's a lot. Covering everything. Covering Six Nations, Super Rugby, TRC. Um, I think also the fun stuff as well. Like you, You're really pumping the rugby side. We've got kick-ons as well. A million percent. We also mm. want to do these win the Wallabies for a week. Where you guys Should I wear a GoPro when I go out? Yes. I think that would be good. <laughs> yeah, not for the show, just so you can have a look the next day. <laughs> so, so <laughs> for legal reasons. Yeah, for legal reasons. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's plenty going yeah. on. And the other thing is live shows. So I'm really keen, because okay, some of the stories you guys tell me that we can't say on here, I mm. think we do them in a live show, yeah. maybe before each of the Wallabies tests, and we sell tickets, um, and I think I think people would turn out. Write in if you'd turn out. Um, thank you. Merry Christmas. Yeah, um, Merry Christmas. Well done, well done. Merry yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Uh, Hugo, thanks for bringing the cameras. Yeah. To Tommy, the amazing party. set. Tom, yeah, well great done, mate. set. Tommy, well done, Tom. Set. Ollie, great. Yeah, Ollie, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> Were you on the set as well? You know Ollie's just been on uh, Bucks parties and golf trips and all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so that's it. Merry Christmas. Um, and Feliz Viva. Navidad, is that? Feliz Navidad. Yeah. Um, um, happy Joy Kwanzaa. Noel. Yeah, Joy yeah, Noel. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, happy Hanukkah. Oh, and just happy what holidays. Is Christmas in Japan? It's like it, it was very close to Christmas, but it wasn't Christmas. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, that's a big finish to the show there. That's great. <laughs> Huge. Sweet. All right, Coco. Gumbo. Right? Coco? Sorry. Yeah, you're going to say, Coco. Uh, I don't know if we can say, I'm in love with... No, it's probably just, just trademark. Coco. We asked Coco. <laughs> <laughs>